Rivalry renewed on the hardwood as it's Manesson and Charleroi for the second time in as many years. As Manesson has dominated the series as of late, they've won the last 11 versus the Charleroi Cougars. Last one came a season ago, 54-51 in favor of the Manesson Greyhounds of Charleroi. Prime to change that number here this evening. It's gonna take, I think, another big performance by the big man, Will Wagner, who started his season off with a bang. 36 points in his opening game of the year in Charleroi's victory over the Sarah Catholic Eagles. Alex Lyons, Jeremy Salou with you here for all the action from Charleroi High School as almost a tune-up for us as most of these teams are getting those tune-ups before section play starts. Tune-up for us from Charleroi before we get to the Charleroi Hoops Classic, which we'll have exclusive coverage for here on MBI Live. Yeah, Alex, it's going to be an interesting game to see how these teams respond after the shootout classic to see, you know, especially Manessa, and they had a really tough schedule. And uh, we'll talk about that here in a second as we get to the anthem and the starting lineups, and we'll be right back. As I was saying, Alex, uh, looking at Manesson, they played South Allegheny, they played McKeesport, but I'm sure, you know, despite those games, they had some lessons learned. And I'm sure they're not going to come in here fearing their rivals from across the river here. It's always, it's one of those games I hate to use the cliche, but throw the records out. And, uh, you know, these two are going to get after it on the court tonight after the football season, which the bridge officially belongs to Charleroi. Right? Charleroi won that football game. I believe. Yeah, so another battle for the bridge tonight here on the hardwood. I'm eager to be alongside you and get ready to go through this. Fresh off fourth grade Metro girls practice today. So so, so we know where your mind's at already. I'm, I'm, I'm in basketball mode. As a look at the starting lineups, both sides. Lorenzo Gardner, Lanage Thomas, Cody Coons, Dante DeFelice, and the big man, Jashawn Blackman, the starting five for the Greyhounds of Manesson. And on Charleroi, the same five from this weekend as well. Brennan Shannon, Ben Shields, Gavin Thays, along with Jacob Caruso and Will Wagner. I'm really interested to see how Manesson comes out and defends Wagner. Um, they, they, they know he lit it up over the weekend. So uh, as, as the season gets on, I don't expect his totals to be quite as high but he's still going to be counted on to carry this team, and he's the kind of player that can do whatever it need, he needs to do, whether it's rebound, pass, you know, or, of course, shoot and score. He's going to do whatever it takes. And uh, I know he, got his, he has his eye on his dad's name up on that 1,000-point scorers list, his dad being the all-time leading scorer here at Charleroi on the boys' side. So, yeah, The Wagners' family tradition, last two playoff wins involved the Wagners. Will yes. a season ago on his birthday putting out a stellar performance of 29 points in that win over number 15, Steel Valley. Bill was on a team in that last win versus Steel Valley before a season ago. And I'm going to be watching just to see what, what Lorenzo Gardner we get here tonight. He faced a little bit of, er of adversity over the weekend. Some frustration came through, but, you know, in that opening game against South Allegheny, he had the pedal to the metal, and he still finished with a good scoring night and was leading the way for his team. 
but still only a sophomore, so he's still learning as well. As DeFelice into the front court will set the offense up, pressured by Wagner, kicks it to the near side, Coons all alone underneath, it's Thomas. One dribble off the bottom of the backboard, no good, it shields on the board. Thomas poked it free for a second, now it stays, handing it off back the other way, Brennan Shanning. Now it's Wagner, Wagner steps into a triple and starts this game off with a missed shot off the iron as DeFelice will slow things up. That's one thing Manessin does have in this matchup is the size advantage. So there we'll go. see how that works out. And there we see it there. As knocking it home, the opening bucket goes to Lanage Thomas. Nice pass there by Gardner to find him from the short corner. Caruso, double team, tries to swing it in. Shields finds a cutting Wagner, one dribble, double teamed again. As Manessin all over Wagner. Wagner kicks it back up top. That's Caruso, one more, Thays. Back up top, Caruso with the triple, and he knocks it down. And that, Schalleroy gets their first lead. And that's the key for Caruso is hit, hit those shots early. Very streaky shooter, but like Coach Wiltz always says, if he hits that first one, he could be in for a big night. As Lorenzo gets it off the deflection, drives in. Lorenzo fights through the contact, can't make it. And with the finger roll, it's Blackman giving the Greyhounds the one point lead back. Thays for three of his own, and Thays knocks it down. Six points all from beyond the arc for Schalleroy. They're up by two with 6.20 remaining here in the opening quarter. That's one thing Coach Bosnick, I'm sure, preached to his team is this Schalleroy team loves to shoot that three ball, and they're gonna keep shooting it, even more so now that they made their first couple attempts. Lorenzo off the deflection, drives in. Lorenzo no good, rebound by Blackman. Tries to kick it to Coons, now it's Gardner. And Gardner travels first, and will head back the other way. 6-4 lead for Schalleroy, 6-0-1 opening quarter. I think a big thing for Gardner here, we saw him get to align the, the line a lot this weekend, and I think he needs to attack Wagner early on. And Wagner has been prone to foul trouble. We saw it in that second game on Saturday. He had three fouls pretty early in the game, so if they can get him into foul trouble, that's all in their favor. They've kept him off the board thus far as DeFelice flips it up ahead. That's the Blackman, the big man. DeFelice pressured by Wagner, now skips it near side. That's to Coons. Coons puts it on the floor, now to the corner. Gardner pressured by Shannon, back to Coons. Deflected along, DeFelice. Near side, Coons in the right wing, and Coons off the mark. And a foul underneath, I think Blackman Gonna pick up the first of the game. Yeah, Blackman gave him a little two-hand shove underneath the basket trying to get position, so good call there by the official. Blackman's first team first with 5.21 remaining opening quarter. It's a 6-4 lead for Schalleroy. Caruso double teamed as he's into the front court. That one's knocked away by Coons. Caruso gets it back, and eventually Caruso gets fouled. And gives a clap right at Dante DeFelice. Foul goes against De Felice. That's two early fouls here on the Greyhounds. 5.09 opening quarter. It's a 6 4 lead here for Schalleroy. Shannon kicks it to Wagner in the right wing, pressured by Blackman. Wagner double teamed again and turns it over right to Gardner. There goes Lorenzo. Lorenzo lays it up and one. Lorenzo Gardner ties it up and has a chance to give Manessin the lead right back. That's the one thing Gardner did not do this weekend. He did get to the line, but he didn't make the shot when he was getting there. Yeah, he had, what do you have, like 25 attempts to one, the first, the opening night on Friday. I think he had, it was 13 for 25, I think. As he'll knock that one down, the foul went against Caruso. The lead up to one for Manessa as the old school three-point play converts. Down low, it's Shields all alone. Ben Shields makes it 8-7 in favor of the Cougars. Good look, they're, they have the Greyhounds extended and they're getting open baskets. With the right hand, not how you normally want to draw it up, but Caruso gets the finish. Three point lead for Schalleroy, their largest of the game with 428 remaining opening quarter. DeFelice steps into one, now it's Coons. Coons, foul line, travels first. Head coach Wiltz of the Cougars 
Big fan of that one. Pointed at the official yeah, and said, was. good call. It's not all the time that the uh, officials get the good call and the thumbs up from the uh, head coach. Bryce Large replaces Brennan Shannon. Or actually make that Jacob Caruso. And Bryce Large, the role he's seeing as a sophomore reminds me a lot of the role we saw Sam Maselli have for this team yeah. as a freshman. Plays a ton of JV minutes, but is the first one off the bench. As stays from the corner again, this time it's short, but there is Large who's unable to hit as it knocks off the back iron. DeFelice into the front court, double teamed again. Schalleroy suffocating the point of attack, and there's Large coming up with the foul. No uh, short of emotions here by the crowd. The crowd's into it already. They were into it for the JV game. Were they? Yeah, I missed that, but uh, yeah, they're they're into it now. I mean, Charleroi definitely with a student section advantage, but uh, yeah, the big even the, even the benches are into it. Big conclave right across your screen. That's the students of Charleroi here for this one. As the big man Blackman knocks down the long three. The big man shown his range. We're tied again. Shields loses the handle. Lanage Thomas. Near side, De Felice. De Felice. Bounce pass to Coons into the front court. Coons down low. There's Lanage unable to hit, but he gets it on the putback. Lanage Thomas up to four. Emanesson up by two with 3.22 remaining here in the opening quarter. Wagner scoreless thus far. His team down by two as Wagner rolls to his right, to the corner. There's Large, and Large hit up with the travel. Another good call. They're, they're on top of it today. And that's the fourth Charleroi turnover here in the first five minutes. Blackman five, Thomas four, Gardner three, five for Caruso, three for Thays, and two for Shields thus far. Two-point advantage with 3.05 remaining opening quarters. This one's the Blackman in the corner. Blackman along to Coons. Coons, bounce pass along. That's the De Felice. Dante De Felice double teamed again, found Gardner. Lorenzo skips it all the way over to Blackman. One more. Coons with the triple. Got nice it. Shot. Greyhounds on an 8-0 run here behind the two three-pointers by Blackman and Coons. As Caruso dribbling through the press, normally ill-advised, and it results in the foul by Dante DeFelice, his Two. second. Two thirty-five remaining opening quarter. It's a 15-10 lead for the Manessin Greyhounds as Tim Kershaw going to check in, replacing DeFelice. And Coach Bosnick had to give him old, the old tuck-in-your-jersey reminder on his way to the scorer's table, so it took him an extra minute to get in. Officials haven't cracked down on that yet this year. I've seen a number from the I've seen corner. a lot of coaches cracking down on it, so. Alonzo Wade, I think, played the full game yesterday at Belvern, as Wagner finally on the board. But you're saying played the entire game, I think, without his jersey tucked in for the Leopards. As Belvern beat 3A preseason number five in Washington as that one slides to the hands of Bryce Large, 15-12 lead for the Manessin Greyhounds, 2.08 remaining here in the opening quarter. One thing I noticed too, the Greyhounds are using their size advantage. They're throwing passes right over the heart of that Charleroi defense, and they're completing them. Gardner with the triple off the back iron rebound to Thomas, and Thomas puts it home. Lanage Thomas, the sophomore, give him six in the opening quarter. And when you're double teaming the ball, if you can fire across the heart of that defense quick enough, there's always an open man as Thays gets fouled this time by. I think he will be shooting a pair. It's gonna be Blackman second. First free throw attempts of the day here for Schalleroy. Stays puts it off the front iron, no good. And DeFelice will come back in. This time it's in replace of Blackman. DeFelice and Blackman both with two fouls apiece. And you see your camera maybe shaking a little bit. I can't tell if it is or not on the screen. That is the Manesson student section <laughs> making their presence not just felt in the game but on the broadcast as well. As Stays puts it up off the back iron, but Shields got the board momentarily and it's nice hit out play. of bounds. 
Nice Cody play Coons. by Coons to throw it off of Shields. Uh, yeah, phase with both misses, and uh, you know that we say it all the time, and I know Naz preaches it on the broadcast. You have to hit those free throws. And then we're seeing the depth here for the Greyhounds being tested. De Felice right back on the floor with those two fouls after the foul on Blackman. De he also has two fouls, I believe. From the elbow, knocks it down. Dante De Felice. Manessin up to 19. They're up 19 12 with the 120 remaining, and over and back is the call on the Cougars. Another Cougar turnover. That's five already. It's going to be very important for Dante out there for Manessin to stay out of foul trouble. One more. If he gets three before the end of the quarter, that Manessin could be in a lot of trouble. As Gardner skips it across to Coons. Coons. Drives in, tries to kick it out, but there's Wagner in transition. Will Wagner drives right to the cylinder, and Will Wagner fouled. Tripped up there. Feet got tangled with Coons. That'll go on Cody. You know, you like that Wagner draws the foul, but Wagner's such a great scorer, so, such a strong guy as well. You hate to see him kind of try to cut under the contact say, instead of just going right at You'd it. like to see him just you know, put his body into him, get a little contact, and go straight up strong with that, yeah. You're gonna get fouled either way, but you have a way better opportunity of making the bucket. As Will Wagner cuts the lead down to six. And he hits both. Lead down to five, Will Wagner up to four. Very spread out scoring on both sides thus far. Nice balance, and that's one thing I know Coach Bosnick wanted to see more of over the weekend was balanced scoring. It was Gardner most of the time leading the way. You know, but Thomas has stepped up. Coons has hit a couple big shots here, or has hit one, one big three. Blackman hit a big three. Manessa's gonna get the 30-second time out here as Coach Bosnick could smell the turnover coming for the Manessa Greyhounds, and I think that's a very good timeout used as it was on the verge of either being a turnover, or a travel, or a backcourt violation. Instead, just a 30-second stoppage here in quarter number one. With 47.3 on the clock, Manesson up 19-14 over Charleroi. I have committed the cardinal sin of doing my stats in a pen. So, of course, I had to switch to my trusty pencil. As we get ready here is Charleroi trailing by five early on here. It's the one thing I've luckily not been burned with yet doing it in pen because I, I switch per quarter. Right. Because I, I just right. do running, scoring, and foul. So first quarter, I always do in one color, switch it for second quarter, switch it for third, switch it for fourth, instead of having to split up my spotter boards into four boxes, which sometimes is terrible because some guy gets to go off for eight in the first and none right. in the second. So it's one of those things that you kind of have to make sure you're adjusting so I can give the best information to our listeners with 19... 14 lead for Manesson, 39.6 on the clock. De Felice wants a foul there. He ain't going to get it. But ball out of bounds on the Cougars. Gardner skips it across, deflected down low. Nice now it's Kershaw, and Kershaw kisses it off the glass and in. Good look by De Felice to make that extra pass from the elbow there. Caruso to the corner, make that the wing. It's Thays. Thays back up top, rolling with it. That's Caruso. Down low, large goes, there's Wagner, kick out, Thays with the triple, got it! Huge three for Thays. Chalaroy inching ever closer, lead down to four. Gardner has to hurry, two seconds, and Gardner called with the travel. Yeah, he gotta pass that ball. That trap coming up high, there, there's gotta be somebody open that you're gonna be able to get the ball to. With one second on the clock, Chalaroy has a chance. See if they try to go that off-ball screen and get a catch and release shot. Thays looks to be open on the far side if they can get it to him. Now it's Wagner. Wagner just chucks it at the basket. Just missed. A little low in. You know, I'm surprised it was that accurate for Wagner right, going those was, skip pass kind of. That was of. the old soccer toss. As after one quarter of play, 
Manessen 21, Schalleroy 17, but the Cougars have really done a good job of shooting themselves in the foot in this early going by turning over the basketball a lot. Yep, five turnovers right now for Schalleroy by my count. And only three for Manessen, but two there late in the final seconds. Uh, you're not going to win many games if you're in the lead on turnovers, so we'll see what they can do to come out here. I think the pressure by Manessen and their size, their length's really bothering them. They're getting that trap down in the low corner. Uh, but I'm sure Coach Wiltz is going to come up with something where they could try to maintain the ball on the wings or the top and try and stay out of that position. Or, you know, get a quick dump down into that corner and then drive baseline and get to the basket. A big thanks to our friends at Chloe and Me Candles. If you're looking for handmade gifts this season, we've got you covered. All of our products are made in-house by us since 2014. Our waxes are a priority blend of soy, paraffin, coconut, and corn. We use cotton core wicks and plutonium-free oils. Our body products are made with the finest quality oils, butters, and salts for your skin. 205 West Main Street, Monongahela, or call 724-298-8696. As Thays pops up the mid-range jumper, and that one out of bounds, deflected off by Thomas. And that's exactly what I said, attacking from that baseline position now, at least on their first possession. Caruso up top. Caruso to the foul line, kick out, that's Shields. Near side, Gardner Another picks turnover. it off. There goes Lorenzo. Gardner straight to the rim, and Gardner fouled again. This time it's Brennan Shannon. Good job by Charleroi to adjusting on that corner attack. They're attacking the corners from the high post, so it's giving their guys a little extra time when they're out there in that corner. Lorenzo, the only free throw attempt tonight for Manessin. He's now two for two, he has four points. Gardner with the right, knocks it down. Gardner three for three from free range. As into the front court, Wagner got along, Shields all alone underneath Thays and he's stuffed. Cody Kuhn says no. He said something else after that, too. <laughs> I think he was reminding him that he's going to be there all night. And I think Thay's even got a little lucky that that wasn't a travel first. Yeah. The trigger is Shannon. Shannon needs an outlet. That's in the form of Will Wagner. Wagner up top, Thay's. Far side, he goes Caruso. Wagner cutting without the ball. Now it's Shields from the right elbow off the back iron, off the rim, off the back iron, and no good. And eventually on the baseline, I think, was Coons, so it's going to stay with Schalleroy. Felt like the end of almost a basketball cartoon, the way that ball was bouncing around. Usually the home team gets that roll. Flipped in, Wagner, a little tip drill, no good, rebound the other way. Here comes Lanage Thomas. Thomas straight up and in with the right. Eight points for the sophomore. 25-17 Manessen. Under seven left here in the quarter. It's just a matter of the Greyhounds are beating the Cougars down the floor every time. Here's another one. This time it's Clayton, and Clayton lays it in. There's the timeout. What a start to the quarter for the Manessen Greyhounds. As Schalleroy scoreless, Manessen scored six straight to start this quarter. And it's, it's turnovers, like you mentioned. I mean, now up to seven already here, and you've only played a total of nine, nine and a half minutes. And then when they get that turnover, the Greyhounds are right up the floor looking to attack to the basket, and they're beating Schalleroy up and down. And I think one thing you're also noticing, they're not avoiding the contact either. You know, Schalleroy, they're doing a good job in a sense in the back check. That's right. the best way, I, still, I know it's a hockey term, but I still think that's the best way to describe that. And they're doing a great job of getting back, but the issue right. is Manessin's not afraid. They're attacking that right. contact, and they're embracing it, and Schaller's kind of backing off there. Well, on the other end of things, I think is playing very timid under the rim with all this size from Manessin. Right. 
I mean, you got to look to get at the Shields and Wagner, I think, down low and attack those big guys. Let's try to get them in some, into some foul trouble, you know, or try to get to the free throw line. Both are very good free throw shooters. We saw it over the weekend. So if they could attack the basket, you know, try to get to the line, get some free points, that clock doesn't run. So they got to try to get back into this one. As it's Caruso along to Shannon, back to Caruso. Caruso into the front court, over to Shannon. Vanessa continuing to double team that ball There's and another, another steal. This time it's DeFelice over the Cougar logo, logo, trying to spin away from Wagner. Now it's Lorenzo Gardner and Gardner. Another travel. Got to put that ball on the floor, floor just a little bit sooner. I like the confidence though that Lorenzo's kind of playing with here tonight. Yeah. That's one of those things. I think his biggest enemy on the court is always himself. From yeah. watching him this summer to even this weekend as Caruso lost the handle and out of bounds off of Coons. Coons asked for the travel and I think he has a good reason to. He tried to, he, he successfully bounced it off of Caruso but then it came back and hit him while he was standing out of bounds. So therefore to stay Cougars ball. As Shannon, bounce pass, there goes Thays. Thays drives in, now kicks it, Wagner one dribble, gets the man in the air and he's surrounded. Yep. There's Lanage back the other way to Kershaw in. Around Shannon, off the glass and in. Kershaw up to four. Lead up to 12 with 5.55 remaining here in the quarter. Caruso tangled up. And DeFelice picks up his third. And one thing, it looks like the adjustment that has been made for Manessin defensively those skip passes that we're getting through in the first are not as, they're using the length of Thomas to kind of break those up as Wagner for three, no good. Rebound, Shields, and Shields blocked, but he's fouled. Yeah, anytime you have that chopping action like Thomas just showed there, you're gonna get that foul. He free throws the rest I of the it's way. it's Coons from behind. Felice still on the floor with three fouls. The sub is at the bench, though. Here, he, here comes Clayton. I think he's questioning why he's coming out. Well, you, got <laughs> you look up fouls. at the board, you got three fouls, bud. <laughs> we got we to gotta save you for the whole game. Now Shields off the mark. Iron very unkind tonight for Schaller thus far. I think Coach Wilts is going to practice on that hoop tomorrow. Gardner up top, Lorenzo. Slows things down. Lorenzo Gardner gets the man in the air. Now it's Coons all alone for three. Buries it. Coons up to six. Another triple for the Greyhounds. We're up to an 11-0 run here to start the quarter for the Greyhounds. And there's another easy steal by Coons. And Coons kisses it off the glass. He has the last five. Your coach Wilts, you got to get a timeout. You got to stop this run. Wagner to Caruso. They haven't even got near the cylinder as of late, and Kuhn's going to get the personal. That's going to be his third. And that's the one downfall thus far for Manessin, his fouls. It's going to be one and one. As they're going to increase the size, 5'8 comes out and 6'6 six, six comes in. I want to say it was 10. Coons does pick up the personal there. Yeah, it was his. That's his third. Caruso to the line. Got to make the first to get a second. So crucial to get this first hit. He will do just that. He's up to six points. First point of the half, or the quarter here. 34-18, Manessin. All over Schaleroy. And now if you're Charleroi, you have an advantage here. You got Coons and De Felice on the bench. You gotta go. Coons, one of the biggest players working in that low post. Gets both, 34-19 now. And the thing, you look at that, that was three minutes what Manessin just did there. Right. So there's still a ton of time this quarter to really shrink the lead before the half. Coach Bosnick yelling for his team to be patient here. Lorenzo Gardner along to Kershaw. Kershaw left wing down low he goes. Back up top, that's Gardner. Gardner near side for three and that one off the mark. Rebound grabbed by Shields as Clayton couldn't hit. 
Robinson came in as well for the Manessing Greyhounds on that last substitution. Far side, Caruso. Caruso drives in, foul line down low. The big man, King, up and fouled. This time it's Lanage Thomas. Or make that Robinson. Thomas was all over him, so they had to get Robinson, I guess, from behind. And I think Robinson shocked he got. He said, what was that for? Right. The big man, Jake King, comes up just short off the front iron. Through the routine, overcorrected off the back arm at lane violation on Lorenzo Gardner. He'll get another. Too short the first time, too long the second time. Can he adjust and put it right down the middle here on the third attempt? He'll do nice. just that. Jake King onto the board. Cougars up to 20, lead down to 14 with 4.15 remaining here in the quarter. Clayton in no hurry, goes to Kershaw. Kershaw back to Clayton, near side to Lorenzo Gardner. Gardner, pressure tightly by Caruso. Wagner tries to help, float it over him to Clayton. Clayton one more to Kershaw. Gardner wants it, he gets it on the near side off the skip. Lorenzo, down to the corner, that's Robinson back to Gardner. Gardner, up top. Clayton, bounce pass to Gardner. Gardner has Robinson, instead goes to Kershaw on the left wing, drives in, foul line, lost the handle. Wagner onto the floor, gets the shields right back to Wagner with 3.38 remaining here, quarter number two. Wagner looks to penetrate, Wagner kicks it, Caruso for three off the mark. Rebound, Will Wagner. Wagner goes up and Wagner is fouled. This one goes against Tim Kershaw, who's not a fan. As Will Wagner is two for two from the line, we'll head back, he has four points tonight. Perfect that time by. Cougars still waiting for their first field goal of the quarter. As we get a timeout here, 32nd variety from Schollaroy. Just trying to figure things out. Big thanks to our friends at Itty Bitty Treasures and More at the Riverside Village Shops for something extra special. Memory, domes, engraving, awards, screen printing, embroidery, gifts, and so much more. 127 Spear Street, Bell Vernon, 724-483-2290. It's misleading. It's 127 Spear Street, but it's in Spears, which it has a Bell Vernon address. It's, it's really awkward, because I live on Spear Street in North Bell Vernon. I'm think, I know where it is, and I'm like, <laughs> that just doesn't make sense reading this. Right. So don't be fooled. It's in Lower Spears. Isn't it right next to uh, Spear Street Grill? It is. As Wagner, iron unkind that time, and that Ooh. one out of bounds. Last touch by Robinson, who took a hard fall into the Manesson bench. Robinson kind of went through Ben Shields there. Surprised he didn't get whistled for that. Wagner to Caruso. Caruso Dude. lost the handle. And I think th these new balls, I think people are still are. trying to adjust to. We've seen it in every game I think we've witnessed. All 10 over the weekend. Saw it last night at Belvernon, And that's happening so much more. And I'm all, all for going to a universal ball. But I thought, I said this last night to Naz, it should be that evolution. Yes. That is by far the best ball that I had the opportunity ever to play with, and everyone I've talked to, I think really agrees with that player-wise. Right. I mean, look at the summer league, all the kids that bring in their balls are all evolutions. It's Sometimes there's the Nike elites, but you're not gonna pay the, you're, if you're the Whippy or the PIAA, you're not gonna pay for this. No. You're gonna pay for the Wilson ball. No, those elites are nice, but it's that nice soft touch you get, and right. they're being soft, but you still have that feel, and they don't feel almost right. like the Walmart $5 balls. Right. which I feel like these kind of have that feel to them. They have a very cushy grip. Up ahead, and that one's batted away by Robinson. Kept in play, but right to Wagner. Will Wagner gets the job done. He'll look for one more. There is the first field goal of 
the second quarter for the Cougars. Second one on Devontae Robinson off the bench as the freshman has picked up two. And this is one of those things, a play like that with Will Wagner exploding for the and one opportunity, can that give the Cougars the life they need? He's a chance to make it a 10 point game. And he'll do just that. Will Wagner up to eight. He leads all Schollaroy Cougars. 34-24, Schollaroy trailing Manessin. Gardner looks to increase the lead. Got it! It's a big shot there for Lorenzo Gardner. Lorenzo up to eight. 37-24, Manessin on top. 2.35 remaining here in quarter number two. Wagner off the feed, there goes Wagner, and Will Wagner too strong. Rebound King blocked by Thomas, and Thomas taken down by Wagner. Lanage Thomas hung in there, took the hit and drew the foul. Will Wagner picks up his first. Two twenty-five remaining here in the quarter. Large will be checking in at our next break for Schalleroy. As into the front court, Clayton goes with a pass to Gardner, back to Clayton, gets Wagner in the air, bounce pass to Thomas, and Thomas Good is going to be fouled by Jake King. Got to play defense with your feet and try to at least get it to the, at least to the side of him before you make that reach to poke it away. As Caruso will come out, as I mentioned, large in. Shields fronting the ball. Clayton the trigger up top, that's Lorenzo Garner, near side corner, he goes with it. Kershaw tries to drive in, bounce pass out of bounds, and Shalroy takes over. Seventh turnover here of the half for the Greyhounds. Cougars with 10. Wagner in the near side. And that one's picked off by Gardner. Lorenzo up ahead, got Wagner in the air. There goes Lorenzo straight to the wow. cylinder. Lorenzo Gardner doing it all, he's up to 10. Gardner told his teammates, just don't worry about it, I got it. Phase for the answer, and off the back iron it goes. And Gardner watches it go out of bounds, but it went up over the backboard. As the clock continues to take a few seconds off, eventually stops with 139, and a 39-24 lead in favor of Manesson here in quarter number two. As they've come into Schalleroy, and they've put up a statement first half thus far. As Manessin coming into play was only scoring 41 points a game through the first two. They're at 39 and half, not even halftime. Clayton to Kershaw. Kershaw on the right wing. Pressured by Large tightly. Back up top, Clayton. Gets around Wagner, drives in, 15 footer, no good, but Thomas had it for a second, taken away. Shields has Wagner up ahead, underhand scoop. There goes Wagner up off the window and in. Will Wagner up to 10. Lead down to 13 with a minute remaining. Schallerroy can get a stop and score, get within 11 or 10 before the half. That could go a long way to determining the outcome of this one. Almost picked off by Thays, instead it's Gardner floating it up off the back iron. Rebound King, up ahead, there goes Thays. Thays up and he's fouled from behind. I think it's Lanage Thomas. 42.8 on the clock. And it's Clayton. I'm sure Manessin's glad it's on Clayton over Thomas, as that's only his first. Is right. Manessin all sorts of foul trouble here in this one? Either one would have been okay. Thomas doesn't have a foul yet either. So. As Thays but knocks that one down, he's now one for three. You send the Cougars to the line without that clock running. A chance to cut into this lead. And now really with this, they have a chance to get back to a single digit deficit before the half. Thays, iron unkind, and that one corralled by Thomas, floats it to Gardner, and Lorenzo Gardner just slows things down. Clayton, near side, that's Kershaw. Back up top, Gardner. Manessin's done a great job without Coons and DeFelice for the majority of this second the quarter to, five keep, minutes. to really keep this lead. Yeah, the Cougars haven't really been able to take advantage. Well, we do it here, it's Shields. Shields gets Gardner up, no good rebound. Wagner up and he's fouled. It's gonna be another one on Clayton. 
Cougars just have to finish at the rim. Even if, even with the fouls, I mean, very makeable shots. Bosnick not happy after that one. As that's Clayton's second now. Will Wagner again with the clock stop can get this to a 10 point game. But he misses there. Wagner has made four on six attempts thus far. Trying to go five for seven. He will. Wagner up to 11. Lead down to 11. Vanessa will hold for the last shot with 10 as Clayton has it poked away, but it goes right to Gardner with six. And he banks it off of Thays out of bounds. Four seconds, so this is almost going to be a play inbound catch and release type thing. And, th and that's a play Gardner just has to take a look around. You, you, don't, you didn't need to do that there. You had Clayton right here at center court that was open for an easy pass. So if you try to get an off ball screen, instead it goes right into Gardner. Gardner one dribble, pops it up wow. and puts it in. It looked rushed, it looked unneeded, but Lorenzo Gardner hits from beyond the arc. Up to 13, and Manessin takes the 42-28 lead into the locker room. Looked like Gardner just rushed things and threw up the prayer that, and it was answered. It was not pretty by any means, but it was effective. Didn't even touch the rim, nothing but the bottom of the net. And that was big. 21 points in both quarters for Manessin. Their average total again coming into play was 41 points per game. They have 42 and, and at the half. And it's funny because we, we heard some moans and groans about the schedule they played over the weekend. They played South Allegheny, they played McKeesport. Well, they're their play tonight is a direct benefit of playing those early tough opponents. They're not fear, they're, there's no fear going in here against the Cougars. They've created turnovers, they've gotten into their defense, they're beating the Cougars down the floor. They're playing the style they wanna play and they're dictating it. So, you know, kudos to Coach Bosnick for using those two games as a learning lesson and you're seeing the result. And this is kind of what we expected to see from Manessin, you know, once they get into section play, you know, this is what we expect from them, and they're playing their game for sure. Yeah, Manessin definitely, coming out of last year was my thought, either them or Carmichael's has that section wrapped up. Frazier, the defending section section champs who beat Manessin for that sole section title last year, lost eight seniors. They're struggling tonight against South Moreland. They were down by 10 last time I looked, 19-9, but it's one of those things It's kind of, is it bearish or in the Mighty Mikes, or is it going to be Gardner and the right. Greyhounds? And, you know, if Manessin comes out and plays like this in section play, I think Manessin's going to get back to that, starting a new streak of section titles, which was broken two seasons ago. But we also want to thank our friends at Hills Restaurant who want you to stop on down Main Street in New... Serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner, dine-in or take-out, online ordering now available, www.hillsrestaurant.com. Dot com, the best kept secret in the Valley. You can also call them at 724-258-5422. We'll step aside and we come back. It'll be half number two between the Cougars and the Greyhounds right here on MVI Live simulcast on the Trib Live High School Sports Network.
Back from the half, 42-28. Manesson on top of Charleroi. Will Wagner leads the way for the Cougars with 11-7 for Caruso and Thays. But on the other side, it's all spread out. Lorenzo Gardner has 13. Eight for Lenage Thomas, eight for Coons with five for Blackman and four for Kershaw. They have really spread out the scoring and kind of suffocated this Charleroi team. And they've done it for a half where Blackman, Coons, and DeFelice were all on the bench. The final five minutes of the second quarter, that was the, the key to the game right now with all three of those guys out on the bench. You know, Manesson was able to maintain and even extend their lead a little bit. You know, led by that guy, Lorenzo Gardner. You know, Lorenzo has had a heck of a game thus far as, you know, he's really not shown any fear. He's got to the basket, he's made free throws, and he's made big shots from beyond the arc, including that buzzer beater to send us into the half. All three of those guys with three fouls are back out on the floor now. So the key is how, how long can they make it here without getting that fourth? As it will be Manesson looking to increase their lead to start. They outscored Schallery 21-11 in the second quarter. DeFelice near side. That's Gardner back up top. DeFelice. Lenage wants the oop attempt, but it will not come. DeFelice. Now it's Gardner. Gardner back to DeFelice. Just a little catch eventually to Blackman. Back out to Coons. Coons puts it on the floor. Back to DeFelice along to Gardner. Gardner to DeFelice. DeFelice back to Gardner. Manesson, they're in no hurry and they're fine with just killing some clock. As Wagner almost got the pick, but it's Coons with the three off the mark. Rebound, Blackman tries to dribble it out. Fade away, no good. Rebound, Gardner, he wow. puts it up. And one, Lorenzo Gardner. And that's what we talked about, that Greyhound size between Blackman and Gardner underneath the basket. Might be Lorenzo Gardner's coming out party here this evening at Charleroi. Showing just what type of season he's in for. He's up to 16. He ends the half with the beyond the arc triple and starts the half with the Old school three point play as DeFelice and Coons come out. I think an offense, offense for defense. defense. Yep. I was just going to say it. It's probably the earliest I've ever seen it. But uh, that looks like that's the plan by uh, Coach Dan Bosnick. Thays in the corner. Blackman draped all over him. Nice Kicks pick. it free. Gardner running the floor with Clayton. Clayton 1 2 to the lane and Clayton fouled. No, oh, they call travel. the travel first. That's a big break for Schalleroy. And Manesson is going to come up in the press, or I think they're just confused. And Schalleroy has a chance to take advantage. Wagner right at Gardner, and Will Wagner doesn't get the fall. Thomas to Kershaw up ahead. Kershaw tries to pull back out, and Will Kershaw alone in the corner. Swings it along, that's to Gardner. Lorenzo Gardner, double team. Near side, he comes to Clayton. Clayton skips it across, and Wagner picks it off. Will Wagner all alone, and Will Wagner gets the Cougars up to 30. 13 for Wagner, lead down to 15. For Manesson with 6.22 and counting here in quarter number three. Schalleroy needs stops and scores. Blackman can't get it as it's picked off, and Blackman gets the foul on fourth. Shannon. That's only his third. And head coach Dan Bosnick is not a fan at all after that call. See the frustration. I think it's a combination of Blackman picking up the personal and that it was called in general. The official having a couple words there for Brendan Shannon. Looked more of a friendly variety of conversations. I don't think Shannon had much to complain about. Is another foul. This one on Thomas. And Shields will shoot two. He's 0 for 2 from the line. He has two points coming back in quarter number one. Eight misses from the line in the first quarter for Schalleroy. Or first half, I should say. There's another one. Black, 
Seven makes from the line, looking for eight. It's been a tough night in the early going as Shields finally connects on his fourth try. Lead down to 13. Make that 14. I had a point missing on the graphic. As Lorenzo all alone and Lorenzo Gardner cleans it up. Bays in the corner, skips it across. That's to Shannon, one more, that's Caruso. Caruso, deflection off of Wagner and out of bounds, last touched by Blackman. Surprised Gardner's still finding any space out there. I mean, you, you gotta, gotta put somebody on him, maybe even a, a modified box and one, or just a straight up man, and just have somebody on Lorenzo Gardner the rest of the way. There Make goes. somebody else beat you. Oh, and that's going to go on Blackman. That's going to be four. Blackman didn't move. Wagner initiated the contact. Kind of surprised that did go against Blackman. So I think he has a right to be frustrated there. Is, you know, at this point, Manesson's going to be playing a number of guys that are JV starters, their varsity bench, in the likes of Clayton, Kershaw, and Robinson. Well, and if, if you're, Man, if you're Manessa now, if you don't have a clean lane to the hoop, just kill the clock. You know, use that offense you came out here with. Work the ball around, be patient, and use as much clock as you can. And there's an offensive foul. It's going to go against Shannon, I think, on the screen. It's going to be his second. Clayton pressured lightly by Shannon. As he's in no hurry to cross the timeline, now it's Dante DeFelice back to Clayton. Pressured by Shannon. Clayton gets around him. Clayton sees a lane, and he dumps the it down foul. with a charge first. I think he saw that man underneath, and Lanosh Thomas just a second late. And the Cougars there did switch the man. I'm surprised personally it's taken that long as they've been able to have their way. Still this 2-1-2 for Manesson as they're extending it out with DeFelice. Now it's Thays back up top. Caruso, one more to Shannon. Inside to Wagner. Wagner drives up, puts it up, no good. Rebound by Coons, knocked free but done illegally. That's Thays. And the reason this 2-1-2 one, this is working so well is they're not packing it in because right. they're preventing those three-point shots. So they're stepping up. They're preventing anything. And the reason you want to go to a 2-1-2 is that Gardner is taking away Wagner's favorite spot as Shields gets the block and he gets and fouled by Felice. Felice. That's four on him. As at least for Manesson, if you're a Manesson fan out there listening here on MBI Live, your best player tonight, or best two, I should say, in the forms of Lanage Thomas and Lorenzo Gardner, Relatively clean, and they're not really in jeopardy at all. I have Lenage with one, and I have Gardner with none. As up top, it's Caruso now to Wagner. 47-31. Schaller, I got to start cutting into this Manesson lead. Underneath, Wagner reverse layup. Tried to get a little too fancy. This time he comes up short on the third time. It's the charm for Will Wagner. Nothing. Manesson's a little gun shy to get in there and box anybody out. They don't want another whistle. A lot of looks, eventually the easy bucket for Wagner. That was there if he just took his time earlier and pre-floor foul by Faze. As Large is going to come in, the sophomore replaces Thays, who just picked up his third of the game. Gardner to Coons. Coons back out to Lorenzo Gardner. Gardner up top. That's Clayton. Clayton, pressured by Large, rolls right. Far side, Robinson. Up top it goes. Clayton surveys. Back to Robinson. Again, no hurry for Manesson. 348 and counting here, quarter number three. Large lead here for the Greyhounds. Bounce pass in, Kuhn surrounded, drives foul. through, and he gets fouled by Ben Shields. Oh, 
341 remaining here in the third. 47-33, your lead for Manesson over Charleroi. Flipped up top, that's the Gardner, Lorenzo Gardner. Skips it across, far side, Robinson back to Gardner. Gardner back to Robinson, just a little catch. Now Robinson drives in, turns it over almost, but Shields couldn't get the handle. I think that the one thing the Greyhounds are not doing is when they get a when they get that mismatch, they need to start attacking the basket. Like we see out here after the switch, Bryce Large was on Gardner. Gardner got four inches on him. You know, if you could try to get freed up and try to back him down from the high post and in, you, I think you got to take it. Charleroi, much needed steal, pass across. Shannon make that love, puts it or Large puts it up no good. And a foul in transition, that is on Large. And that's six. They're going to we might be shooting free throws here pretty early here in the second half. That's a As that was a much needed steal, but a lot, even though there's a lot of speed on the court for Charleroi, Large and Shannon do not match up well with 5'8 and 5'9 versus the height of this Manesson defense. Coons up top. There's Robinson. He's the shortest man on the court at 5'8 for the Greyhounds. Walk. That's who will come out and add some more height in the form of Trevon Thompson. Stravian Thompson, the 6'3 junior, checks in. And he's going to be in there, and he's going to take up a lot of space in that lane. And that's what you want. Go, he could go in there and box out. He got five fouls to give. Caruso picks up the dribble. He needs help. Finds in the form of Shields. Down low, there's Wagner. Wagner, a pretty move, Blocked but just could not finish. He got a hand on it. And he, Thomas Ooh. this time. But, but from behind, it's Thompson. It was Thompson. Thomas had a clean block, but it was Thompson underneath. Will Wagner needs these free points. 15 for Wagner thus far. He has four of the five for the Cougars this quarter. We have 239 remaining. Tells you how slow the scoring has been since the turn of quarter number one when Schaller put up 17. Wagner knocks it home. He's up to 16. His fourth make from the charity stripe. As he knocks down both. Will Wagner, 17. Lead Cougars. down to 12. Cougars are trying to start chopping, and there's another turnover. There's Large laying it in. Bryce Large on the board in a large way. Lead down to 10 all of a sudden. Charleroi inching closer to single digits. Gardner looks to change it. Lorenzo kicks up top. Clayton for three. Rattles no good. What a but rebound Thomas. by Thomas. He got to finish that. Here comes Large. Large up ahead and a blocking foul called as losing his footing was Clayton. It's going to be four fouls on Clayton. Going to be one and one, so now a real chance for Schalleroy to make up a lot of ground. It's going to be Bryce Large doing the honors from the charity stripe. You got to make the first if you're large. Team down by 10 with 2.06 remaining in quarter number three. And this is where the foul trouble is coming back to haunt Manesson. As that one knocked up and knocked down for Large, he has three. Lee does shrink to single digits, something that seemed almost improbable for to happen for Charleroi at the start of this quarter. One for two, but rebound by Shields, and it trickles towards the baseline. And, and I think he got his toe on it. So we'll go back the other way. Manessin a chance to get back to a double-digit lead, and... Thompson out, DeFelice back in, but DeFelice has four. So if you were Charleroi and get the ball back, you go right to Dante DeFelice. Absolutely. Get him out of the game in quarter number three, and if you can do that, I think you have a pretty good shot at maybe completing this comeback. Coons pressured by Caruso, gets by him, drives in, and Shields nice takes block. the blocking foul. Coach Wilts, not a, he's not giving the thumbs up on that one. 
in college, absolutely a blocking foul because I would have been in the restricted area, but I thought that would have been the only thing that would have prevented that being a charge, and that rule doesn't apply here. You're going to have a conclave between a couple players and two of the officials on the far side in the paint. DeFelice and Caruso have been jawing at each other all night. You can tell DeFelice is frustrated. I think that gives you all the more if you're Schollaroy to go right at him. As Coons is shooting his first free throws of the game as he knocks it down. He's up to nine. First basket in nearly four minutes for the Greyhounds. Lead back to double digits at 10 with 151 remaining in quarter number three. Shot up and knocked down again. Coons perfect that time by from the charity stripe. Wagner into the front court. Kicks it. That's Caruso for three off the mark. Rebound. Shannon grabs it off of DeFelice and out. Good heads up play by Shannon. I don't know if I've ever seen the ball bounce over a player, though. No, it's very... Like completely, <laughs> even when he jumped, the ball still bounced over him. One of our many minute but skilled players in the Mon Valley as Wagner drives in, up off the window and in. Will Wagner, 19. There's the turnover, it's Caruso, no good. Rebound, Shannon, and he gets it on the putback. 49-42, all of a sudden, Schollaroy right at the heels of the Greyhounds. As Wagner picks up the foul, and I think Caruso really needs to get pulled off by Coach Wilts before a technical gets called on him. He is absolutely furious at the officials. As the last three, he started chirping. And I think it's a great time to maybe sit down your senior and get him back under wraps as Lorenzo will shoot one and one. Lorenzo, no good, doesn't get another. Shields gets travel. the rebound. That should have been a travel, and it will be. The official at the, the official closest official didn't call it. The official over here by the scores table did, but that's a no-brainer in a travel call. Coach Wiltz wants the push first. It will not come, and Manessin a chance to increase their lead. 49-42, 1-10 remaining here in the third. Inbound taken away by over. Caruso. Here comes Large in transition. Large right at DeFelice, and he goes up, no foul. They call, they it. call it, and that's it. Dante DeFelice with a minute three remaining in the third is gone. Two points for Dante DeFelice. His game is done. 49-42, Manessin on top of Charleroi, and Dante DeFelice can't believe it. And Shields, I think, is getting an explanation why he got called for the travel at the other end, but. He's getting, he's getting an explanation from the official that didn't call it. <laughs> this doesn't make sense to me. No, and I'm honestly surprised at the way both coaches, both benches, and all the talk has been that we haven't seen, as that one's knocked home by Large, he's up to four, that we haven't seen a stoppage, and that both benches, players, and coaches have been warned to kind of stop the talking. Right. I've seen officials put up with a lot less, and I think we have a lane violation, and it's going to be on Shannon. 49-43, your score in favor of Manesson. And here comes the pressure by the Cougars. Seven points Somebody this Somebody got to go quarter. to the ball. It is Gardner who does it. Now it's Clayton. Clayton has a little bit of room, pressured by Wagner. And only seven points this quarter for Manesson under a minute to play. DeFelice is fouled out. Now it's Lorenzo down oh, low, broken up. to get it to Thompson. Slowed up by Caruso. Manessin up to 17 turnovers. Wagner deep two, knocks it home. Will Wagner up to 21. Gardner with the answer. Yes, Lorenzo Gardner. He's at 20, 51-45, back and forth we go. Caruso all alone, got it, he got it. And it's a three point game. Jake Caruso with 10 and a turnover for Manessin. 14 on the clock and Schollaroy has a chance to tie before the quarter break. 
Wagner pushes the issue. Here goes Wagner, drives in. Mid-range, Jay knocks it down. The lead's down to one. Will Wagner, 23. Got a foul call against Shields. Over in the corner with 3.5 seconds to go. It's gonna be Coons going the distance to shoot the one and one, make that Clayton. He has two points, no free throw attempts tonight. 51-50, Manessin on top of Charleroi, three and a half remaining in the third. King will come in if this is made. It will not be, rebound by Shields. Up ahead, Caruso, one on the clock, gotta put it up, he does, it will count, but it's off the back iron. What a quarter for the Cougars. They cut the deficit down to one, and after three, 51-50, Manessin barely holding on to the lead. 22 to nine in that quarter for Manessin. What a quarter by Schalleroy. Came flying in. If it wasn't for Lorenzo Gardner, things could be a lot worse. Gardner picked up seven points. The other two belong to Coons from the free throw line. But what a quarter for Schalleroy and DeFelice will not be of service to Manessin the rest of the game. Nope, and the big thing is Manessin had nine turnovers in the first half. They had nine alone in that third quarter, and none bigger than the one that right before uh, Caruso's three-pointer from the corner. A big thanks to our friends at Trigimbo Motors. Come to Trigimbo Motors, a top-rated Pittsburgh area dealership for over 55 years to actually enjoy car buying from their extensive, high-quality selection of cars, SUVs, and trucks. You'll receive personal caring attention and enjoy your experience at Trigimbo Motors of Bentleyville. Visit their website at www.trigimbomotors.com or visit them at 125 Wilson Road in Bentleyville. Charleroi looking for the first lead in what feels like forever. Driving in, one, two, step, Lanage Thomas says no. The rejection from the big man. Manessin has won the last 11 against Charleroi. Going all the way back to 2003, 2004. The last lead for Charleroi was with 433 left in the first quarter when it was 10 to seven. Bounce pass near side for the lead off the mark. Rebound, Wagner with the right, no good. Wagner on his put back, he's fouled from behind. And Will Wagner can give the Cougars the lead from the free throw line. As Lanage Thomas picks up the personal. <laughs> 23 points for Will Wagner. He already has a 36 perform point performance this season. Up to 24 and Schalleroy has tied this game at 51 apiece. Wagner for the lead, they got it. Will Wagner up to 25, 52-51. Charleroi on top, Lorenzo Gardner drives in. Gardner fouled and he'll shoot two. And that's what the Greyhounds need to start doing. When they were successful and they were scoring, they were running the floor. Coach we Ball. saw them slow down and it led back to Charleroi getting right back in this game. Coach Bosnick just checked his Apple watch after that last foul, and I think he was checking maybe the heart rate there as that one comes up short for Lorenzo Gardner. As you can tell, he has been frustrated throughout the course of this game. Lorenzo needs a make for the tie. He's at 20 points, pacing all Manessin Greyhounds. The NBI SBL Summer League player goes 0 for 2. Schalleroy can't pounce on it. Coons has it, but turns it over. There goes Thays, slows up. Thays needs help, he has it. It shields down low. Wagner, one, two, and Wagner. Oh, my Coons. His pocket was picked, but Caruso returns the favor and tried to get too fancy. The easy play is sometimes all you need. 7.07 remaining in the fourth. 
52-51, it's Charleroi on top of Manessin. Inbound to Coons, Coons drives past Thays and Thays gets the blocking foul. And it's just one of those things, you, you can't do it if you're Thays. You're right. backpedaling, you just kind of stop on a dime when the guy's coming full speed at you, it's gonna get called every time. And not the, not the shooter you wanna put at the line either. Now Coons is two for two, he's up to 10 points. It's probably their best free throw shooter right behind Gardner. Coons a chance to give Manessin a two point advantage. At worst, this game will end tied from Coons' trip at the line. It's 52 all. 7.04 remaining in the fourth quarter. Lorenzo, I think a little bit of confusion, gets the answer he wants from the bench, and Coons gives the Greyhounds a lead back. In a substitution, Blackman replaced by Kershaw. Heck of a game here from Charleroi this evening. And like we said, throw out the records when these two get together. Like you said, Manessin's won the last 11. Charleroi's ready for a win. Charleroi wants that 3-0 start. Carry. Carry. That's the 20th turnover of the game for the Cougars. And Lorenzo let him know as he took it right out of the hands of Large. I think they're saying both teams got to come all the way out to the X here. It's yeah. easy. They like to it's kind of just sneak to the end of the table and say, I'm going to come in now. And you got to come to where it's visible for the officials. And you know, just some housekeeping there. Manessin up by one with the ball. Under seven to play in the fourth. Here comes Cody Coons. Coons drives in. Coons pulls up down low. Broken up by Shields. Shields up ahead. There goes Coons interception. And what awareness to put the ball on the floor to not travel. Both teams with 21 turnovers apiece now. Almost another one there as Thomas wasn't expecting it cutting through. Thomas out to Blackman, the big man can shoot. He puts it up and he comes up short. Wagner with the board, most likely another double-double for the big man. Has the points, he has to be close on the rebounds. He's sitting at eight. As Thage and Wagner on the putback, Will Wagner, 27 now. Lead back to one for Schalleroy. Clayton for the answer. He doesn't have it, but foul first. And that might be Wagner's third, and it will be. It could be. Is it that's his, his fourth? fourth? See, I thought I, I missed him for one. Four. And that's big. If you're Schalleroy, or excuse me, Manessa, you have to go at Will Wagner. He has been the cog, 27 points. Schalleroy up by one. Clayton at the free throw line. He's 0 for 1, make him 1 for 2. 6.09 remaining in the fourth quarter. Kershaw comes in, Blackman comes out. As Manesson looks to get the lead back here in a 54 all game in quarter number four. No timeouts have been used yet this half as that one's knocked down again for Clayton. He's up to six. Lead back to one for Manesson. Large directing traffic. Large drives in, now kicks it. Shields back out. There's Wagner for three. He can't hit. Rebound kicked away, but right to Shields. Shields back to Wagner. 15-footer rattles in. Will Wagner and the Cougars back up by one. 29 for Wagner. Across Coons with the triple. Knocks it down. Timeout, Manessin. As Coons gives them the two point advantage. Big shot there by Cody Coons in the corner to give Manessin the two point lead. 58 56, 543 remaining in the fourth. Schalleroy and Manessin going blow for blow since the Cougars have tied this game. Manessin looking for win number one. Schalleroy looking for the perfect 3-0 and start on the season. Again, Manessin without the services of Dante DeFelice, the junior guard. Fouled out with 103 remaining in the third quarter. Wagner with four, Clayton with four, Blackman with four, and Cody Kuntz with three to my calculations. The Greyhounds have almost matched their total from the third quarter already here in the fourth. And they've done it the way they've done it the whole game is they got to get up and down the floor. 
They're getting points in transitions. They're able to kick out on that last play and find Coons, but it all started because they ran the floor. See what Manessin can do. If they can hang on, it can Schalleroy complete the comeback. A lead that looked almost insurmountable, especially when Manessin was playing without DeFelice and Coons for a long period. They were able to hang on to that big lead, and you figured if they were able to weather that storm starting the third quarter, getting the big guys back out there, that they might be able to cruise comfortably, but it's been anything but that. Large, along to Caruso. Caruso turns it over. There goes Cody Coons, and Coons is fouled. It's gonna be on Caruso. I'm surprised he didn't get an intentional for that. Oh, it's on, yep, it was, is on Caruso. That was on Wagner, who's the other man in the area. That would have been devastating for Schalleroy. Their leading scorer with 29 would have been headed to the bench. And only two on Caruso, but again, you put Coons at the line. And he's made them pay there tonight. Six for six. He's up to 17. Chance to be the third player in this contest over 20. Large, Caruso almost picked off. Near side, there goes Large, driving in, bounce pass. Skitters all the way through to Thays. Back up top, Caruso. Now it's a bounce pass to Wagner. Near side, Large drives in. Large, mid-range, Jay. Too long, rebound, Lorenzo Gardner. Charleroi needs to find a stop for Manessa. slow down. All of a sudden, looking to break this thing back open to a six point advantage. Lorenzo with no urgency right now. Coons has it tipped away. Back the other way, Thays. Handoff, Will Wagner. Full head of steam, Wagner. Tried to peel back out. Far side, kicks it to Thays. Thays skips it across right wing. That's large, large down low. There is Wagner, one dribble, puts it up and rattles in. Will Wagner cuts in the deficit down to two. Will Wagner with 31. 60, 58. Manessin, I'm surprised they haven't went at Wagner underneath with four fouls. Gardner will do that with the floater. No good rebound phase. And now Schalleroy a chance to possibly tie. Or the lead, there goes Wagner as Caruso, but it'll slow up. Wagner, double team, Wagner. Has it knocked out. Oh, they fast. get the foul. I thought that was knocked away clean there by Kershaw. But they do get the whistle. Wagner's going to shoot two. We're shooting two the rest of the way. Wagner's made his last five. So let's see if the old announcer jinx is in play here. It hasn't failed during the MVI shootout classic. As Wagner knocks that one down, he's up to 32 points. Now he's made his last six and a chance to tie this game up at 60. Four oh five remaining in the fourth. 60-59 lead for Manessin, and it will stay that way as Wagner rings it off the back iron. Lorenzo Gardner slows the pace. Lorenzo into the front court. Back to man-to-man -to -man here for the Cougars. Caruso all over Gardner. Gardner floats it to Blackman, turned over. Here goes Will Wagner again. Wagner for the lead, and wow. Wagner's fouled. It's gonna be Clayton, it looks like, and that's five on him. 344 remaining in the fourth. Clayton is fouled out, second Greyhound. Will Wagner, 32 and counting. A chance to tie and take the lead at the line. As we're gonna wait for the foul out substitution. Clayton out, Kershaw in. Take all, all 15 of those seconds and let Mr. Wagner think about it a little bit. And I, I really do like what head coach Dan Bosnick did is Clayton came to the bench as Wagner can't knock home the first, but he went to take off his jersey and said, we don't do that, keep right. it on. I, I really like that move by the Manesson head coach. Saw that in the JV game as well with the assistants. Kind of it's full top and down as Wagner gets the tie. He's up to 33. 60 all. Wagner over 50% of the Schalleroy scoring with 334 remaining in the fourth. Lorenzo 1-2 down the lane and in. 
22 for Lorenzo Gardner. Near side, Caruso. Back up top, that's Shannon. Back to Caruso, one more. Wagner for the lead, off the mark. Rebound, Shields, back up top. There goes Caruso with the floater, no good. Rebound out, off, off of Coons. Of 3-11 remaining here in the fourth. 62-60, Schollaroy trailing Manesson. Floated up top, that's Thays. Has Shannon open, he goes that way. Shannon wasn't ready. Back to Thays, one more, there's Wagner. Steps into the three, buries it! Will Wagner gives the Cougars the lead. 36 for the senior. Gardner for the answer, he got it! Lorenzo Gardner! Have yourself a night, the sophomore. Off to a slow start in the shootout classic has caught fire for the Greyhounds. Twenty-five for Lorenzo Gardner. Well, it, it's been the Gardner Wagner show. Really, a great showcase of the what? MVI Summer Basketball League here from Charleroi. Wagner has all thirteen of Charleroi's points here in this quarter. So, I agree with you. Bosnick, whoever's Will Wagner is guarding, you have to go at him. If you want to stay in this game and not give him a shot, you know, you got to try to get him out of this game so you have a shot. Because right now, number 44 has red hot hands and he's hitting everything he shoots. Tied a season high of 36, which was back in game number one for Will Wagner in the victory over Joey DeMoss and the Sarah Catholic Eagles. Short-handed Sarah Catholic team. Right, right. No Brooks, no Shank, no Elijah Ward. Elijah Ward will be out a little longer than Brooks. As Charleroi down by two, thanks to the big three by the big man, Lorenzo Gardner. And that's the best part about this, is just watching Gardner and Wagner go back and forth. Now, Gard Gardner's had a little bit more help with, with Coons with 17 now. You know, the closest help Wagner's had has been Caruso with his 10. Caruso to Wagner once again. Can't Got let it. let him shoot it. Will Wagner. The heat check. Putting on a show. 39 for Wagner. Jump Tie up ball. on the floor, and that's the first, first of the game. Ball. We'll stay with Manesson. 218 remaining in the fourth quarter, 66-65. Coons floats that outside the Gardner. Manessin down by one, just over two to play. Still amazes me that Gardner can even touch the ball offensively. Gets the steal there at Shields. They slow things up with a pass to Caruso. Wagner in no hurry with two minutes. I think this is the first time Schallerois decided to be able to take things slow. Wagner almost had it stolen away. Now Wagner drives in. Wagner kick out Thays for three. The dagger. Knocks it down. Big shot there by Gavin Thays. Up to 10. 69-65. Schallerois in command. And Blackman. Running the point there, now it's the Gardner. Kershaw, it seems like almost must score time for Manessin in an off ball foul. Shields is gonna get called for a hold on Coons. His fourth, all here in the second half. Coons is gonna shoot two. And that's huge for Manessin now. Coons a chance to get up to 19. A chance to cut the lead down to two. And Coons has been so good. A rare miss from the line there for Cody Coons. Still can cut it to a one possession game with a make here for Coons. He will do just that. 69-66, Manesson still up by three. Wagner, now it's Caruso. Caruso can't find Wagner and a foul on yep, Gardner. Or, ooh, 
I think that's why Gardner was a little, I saw them point right towards Gardner. I think Gardner thought the same thing I did. They were calling him for the personal. Full timeout called by Schalleroy here. Three timeouts left for the Schalleroy Cougars. One left for the Manessing Greyhounds. Manessin can't let Charleroi hang around outside and just pass the ball around and kill that clock. They got to get a try to get a turnover, get a steal, run the floor. Sixty-nine, sixty-six. Charleroi on top of Manessin. It was forty-two, twenty-eight at the half in favor of the Manessin Greyhounds. Frustration starting to mount, and I think. Cody Coons is that calming influence on the floor that the Greyhounds really need. He's been there, he's done it before. Right. Now it's the same MO Schalleroy had to do earlier in this contest. Stop and score, stop and score. That gotta be what Manessa's philosophy is right here. Get a stop and get down the floor. They gotta run. They're more successful when they run than setting up in a half in the half court. Surrounding Wagner, no room, but fine. Shields back to Wagner. Wagner back up top. There's Caruso. Drives in, goes to Shields. Shields fights through the contact and puts it in. 71 for the Cougars. To the corner. Gardner for the answer. Off the mark and off the top of the backboard. And all of a sudden, Schalleroy looks like they have got this one in their grasp. He got a foul. Wagner around the horn to Thays. Back up top, there's Wagner. His own teammate ran into him. Wagner running around. Wagner in no hurry now. It's Caruso. Picks up his dribble back to Wagner, drives the baseline, and Wagner's fouled and will shoot two. Gonna be the fourth on Coons, it looks like. And Manessa wasn't playing for the foul there. They were trying to get the stop and score down 71-66. Coach Bosnick was telling them to take one, and when they approached, Caruso was able to get it to Wagner, who drove baseline and got the foul. No good for Wagner. He's on the verge of 40. 39 for the 6'2 senior, Will Wagner. Wagner to increase, he will not, but the rebound by Caruso. Slides it along that Shields. Shields is fouled by the big man. Or is that gonna be Gardner? Let's say Coach Bosnick wanted the foul when Shields fell, and I think he's right. I think that should have been a travel call. They called Shields for it earlier, and that one looked a little more obvious than the first. As Ben Shields will try to ice this game. Can the junior do it? He's had a tough night at the line. He is one for four. They're saying he never had possession with Shields, which I, I think, think that's, that's right. the only answer you can <laughs> give a coach, even though it may be the incorrect one. Right. But hey, we're paid to do this, not what they're doing out there. So Ooh, we'll stick at that. Shields. Shields has had a rough, rough go of it. Now one for five. Shannon out large in. 26.1 on the clock, 71-66. Charleroi, an impressive comeback thus far. That's no go. good. Manessin got to pick the pace up. You figure Blackman's not the one you want running point. Kicks it to Kershaw. Kershaw drives in. No good. Rebound grab down. Who else? Will Wagner. And Wagner fouled by Coons. That's going to be five on Coons. That notches Wagner the double-double. Ten boards now for Will Wagner. Chance still for 40 points. Sitting at 39. Missed his last two free throw attempts as they're going to put in the senior Jack Sacco. Mm -hmm. 
And if Manesson can stay out of foul trouble, this team can be lethal inside their section this year as Wagner there's gets the roll and there's 40. 40. Icing this one. 73-66. Blackman step back, triple off the mark. Rebound by Large. Large just gonna dribble it out. Now goes to Wagner. That'll Wagner. And the comeback complete. Schollaroy from a 42-28 deficit at the half. Rally all the way back to take it. 73-66 over the Manesson Greyhounds, and the Will Wagner Show rolls on with 41. What a game by Will Wagner, and what a comeback. And again, it was that third quarter, what was it, what I say, 22 to nine, that really let them get back into it, gave him a chance there in the fourth quarter to take the lead, and that's all she wrote. Manesson falls on a heartbreaker, Charleroi gains some momentum, moves to 3-0. Absolutely incredible game for Will Wagner and company as the Charleroi Cougars defeat the Manesson Greyhounds 73-66. That's your final. Until next time, on behalf of Jeremy Salou, I'm Alex Lyons saying thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time here on MVI Live.